Hello, good evening, everyone. Great to see everyone here. Um, we um, uh, we called our meeting to order earlier in our closed executive session, so thanks for your patience as we made our way out here. Um, the first thing we'll be starting out with is a special uh, presentation, and I'd like to introduce Dr. Lee McDonald uh, for our special public hearing on the, and I'm going to make a verbal correction here, for the 2023-2024 Annual District Report of Violence, Vandalism, and Harassment, Intimidation, and Bullying, or the Student Safety Report. Uh, over to you, Dr. McDonald. All right. Good evening. Thank you very much. Uh, as stated, this is the 23-24 Student Safety Report. Um, just to begin, this report is grounded in the SSDS system, which is the uh, Department of Education software that is required of all districts each year to input uh, incidents of um, violence, vandalism, HIV, harassment, intimidation, and bullying. Uh, we also have to document what our HIP trainings are and our programs. So I'm not going to read all of the SSDS incident types uh, other than to say that fortunately in WWP um, most of these uh, examples here are not something we see on a regular basis, although they do happen, and it certainly doesn't mean that we're immune to these types of uh, incidents in our community, uh, especially um, in this uh, current state and climate uh, in terms of uh, not only having over 9,000 plus students, but uh, in a world that is at times chaotic to say the least. So looking back a year ago, 2022-2023 incident totals by grade just in terms of where we were last year compared to this year, among those uh, different categories, there's five different categories by grade level. You can see the numbers here. I'm not going to go through each one of them. Uh, but when you think about violence, what does that mean, right? Typically that is uh, some sort of physical altercation, a fight uh, between students that has to be documented that of course might lead to some sort of disciplinary action. Uh, when you think about vandalism, that could be graffiti or some sort of damage to a facility that occurs. Uh, that could also happen after hours, for example. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that that happens uh, during the school day. Uh, substance, some sort of controlled substance um, is uh, either found on a student or somehow a student is under the influence. Uh, as you can imagine with the legalization of marijuana, uh, the access in terms of uh, a controlled substance has significantly gone up in recent years. Um, and then when you think about weapons, uh, typically that is a situation where somebody might bring something into the school. Uh, I'll give you an example that might be more about show and less about intention to harm somebody else. Uh, a, a child bringing in, say, a hunting knife that is not appropriate, of course, for a school setting as an example. So those are tend to be the types of scenarios that we encounter as a school administration. Uh, the last category is a HIP confirm, so harassment, intimidation, and bullying. You can see last year here our total was 194. That has significantly dropped uh, this current school year, and I'll explain why in a minute. So just comparison to this year, uh, the violence category uh, was 26, and that was down from 29 a year ago. The vandalism category was 15, down are up from nine. Uh, the substance category uh, was 14, uh, down from 29. Weapons overall was one, uh, went up to six. Again, these numbers fluctuate, but they're pretty steady if you go back and look at our data the last few years, and then certainly prior to the pandemic. Um, the HIP confirmed, 23-24, uh, 103 cases. Uh, incidents 194 so that's a significant drop and the biggest reason uh, I believe because of that is because of the change in board policy that we made that allows for preliminary determination and what that essentially means is that if an incident is reported and it is uh, submitted via the 338 form which is the online hit reporting form uh, whether that's by a staff member whether that's by a parent uh, a student um, there are four prongs to uh, look at when it comes to HIV, and if the administration believes that the incident does not, assuming all facts are true in terms of what was reported, if it does not meet those four prongs, uh, then it is something that they're allowed to make that preliminary determination and not use the HIB investigation process as an avenue to uh, rectify it. That doesn't mean that we don't address it, that just means that it's being handled in some other capacity that could be uh, a 
code of conduct violation, that could be uh, conflict resolution, that could be a counselor intervention. There's a lot of different uh, tools in our arsenal to address those types of situations. So that would be the biggest reason, and we've spoken about that in prior board meetings as well. So in terms of HIB trainings and programs, that's another piece to the SSDS reporting system that is required. Um, so these are just a few examples of the things that we input into that system as part of our annual report to the Department of Education. I think about school counselors, classroom lessons, and SAC uh, counselors. So our school counselors serve as anti-bullying specialists in all 10 of our schools. Uh, they do push in classroom lessons to students at all grade levels, uh, reinforcing, number one, I identifying what HIB is, and number two, identifying uh, strategies and coping mechanisms um, things to discuss with students with regards to conflict resolution and so forth. Um, school climate initiatives, so as you're probably aware, we have school climate and culture teams at every school, uh, AKA school safety teams is what they were formerly called. That really is meant to be a proactive approach to making sure that our schools have a positive culture and climate uh, where students feel safe and secured and valued. Uh, the summits, the climate summits, we've been doing this practice, we've been, uh, having school climate summits for some time now. Uh, we started these back up post pandemic where we bring the schools together twice a year to just talk about number one, what is happening, what are the patterns and trends, things that we're seeing. We share ideas. Sometimes we bring in outside speakers to reinforce the things that we're working on in our schools. So it's been very be beneficial to bring in students, staff, and even parents as well. Uh, parent teacher association engagements, uh, you know, various PTA events. Uh, whether it's a counselor or an administrator talking about what they're doing in that particular school around culture and climate. Um, administration trainings, anti-bullying specialists, we're fortunate to have uh, a board attorney, Mark Descano, who comes in every year for us and facilitates that training to our school administration and our uh, counseling staff uh, as well. So external professional development, as things change, uh, sometimes it's necessary to send staff out to different trainings. Uh, NJPSA often has different professional development that we might leverage. It could be something related to how we're conducting student interviews. It could be something related to policy programming, but from time to time we do utilize external professional development opportunities. So this is the week of respect uh, across the state of New Jersey. Um, but as I like to say, uh, week of respect is really, a, it should be a daily uh, respect. This is not a, just about a weekly um, recognition, but it's something that we strive to do each and every day in our schools. It's really about making sure that we're doing everything we can to build a positive school culture and climate in our schools, making them inclusive, safe, safe spaces. When you have incidents of harassment, intimidation, bullying, when you have different types of situations with students, um, it's oftentimes that uh, they don't necessarily have those connections maybe with their peers or with an adult. We strive to provide those opportunities so that each and every student feels welcomed and respected uh, in our schools. So in terms of the themes, uh, the things that are being done this week, character education, read alouds, it varies by grade level, of course, but in each and every school, the anti-bullying specialist is taking that lead to make sure that students are well aware of what this week really means and how we can continue to do that throughout the school year. In two weeks, uh, we will recognize School Violence Awareness Week. Again, this is uh, required across the state of New Jersey, and this really is an opportunity for student staff, law enforcement, uh, administration to, uh, to think about what we can do to prevent violence in our schools. I'll talk about health, uh, health and safety a little bit later in this presentation, but it's an opportunity for us to recognize that, again, making those spaces in our schools inc as inclusive as possible uh, having lessons around conflict resolution, how to connect with your peers, giving students those opportunities, um, be it morning meetings, perhaps at the K-5 level, um, teaching tolerance when you think about middle school and high school, really creating spaces that are safe for our students, having open conversations that are sometimes difficult, uh, and certainly thinking about self-regulation when you think about our goal four work or goal three work rather around social emotional learning, that's a huge part as being, uh, you know, having that self-regulation, self-awareness, um, and being able to engage in friendships and connect with your peers. Really important stuff that happens during that week. School climate, uh, as I said before, really critical to this work. Um, if I could change the law from anti-bullying to school climate, I would. 
I think that's really where the focus is, should be. Uh, that being said, these are just a few th items here that uh, we think about uh, when we talk about school climate, right? Health and safety first, right? Are our facilities clean? Are they welcoming? Are they bright? Are our classrooms warm? And uh, are there are staff members visible? Are there opportunities for kids to feel safe when they walk in that school, first and foremost, right? Um, social emotional learning, I highlighted that a second ago, really critical. You think about our Danielson framework for our teaching staff, domain two. Do we have classrooms that are welcoming spaces uh, where, where students feel uh, included? Really important. Uh, culturally responsive classrooms, uh, we certainly are a diverse community. We come from all different parts of the world. Uh, we celebrate that diversity. We want to make sure that our students are represented uh, in that classroom, in the school itself, whether it's instructional materials, whether it is uh, recognizing where they're from, whether it's how to pronounce their name, simple things like that go a long way. Nurtured heart approach, uh, we, we're leveraging uh, the DREAMS uh, grant currently to train multiple staff members in the nurtured heart approach, which is really about trying to uh, work students that might have challenging behaviors, how do you respond to that? It's not just for our staff, but it's also for parents. So you will see workshops and proactive measures put in place across the district in the coming months. Um, we have offered our staff uh, every summer youth mental health first aid, which is a great way for them to kind of recognize um, youth uh, challenges that, that kids might be facing when it comes to mental health. We certainly don't expect our staffs to be professional counselors, but it gives them a background and training to recognize that. When Unfortunately, when you see um, uh, incidents that happen across the country and, and related school violence incidents, a lot of times there's a social emotional, there's a, a, um, a mental health first aid type of scenario there uh, that's an underlying root cause. So we want to make sure that our staff is aware of what that looks like uh, for students and adolescents. Trauma-informed care, uh, I say it all the time, our students walk into our schools, they're not just unpacking their book bags or their Chromebooks, right? No different than adults we bring into our work lives, we bring into our day-to-day -day lives uh, as students, uh, things that we are kind of carrying with us, so we need to be conscious of that, uh, that everybody has perhaps hardships that you don't necessarily see. So that's really important work when you think about trauma-informed care. Um, restorative practices, we've done a lot of work uh, in this area when we think about our code of conduct, discipline, how do, we, how do we provide an opportunity for healing when something does happen, how do we move forward, how do we address underlying kind of behavioral challenges when there is something that happens. Um, that's something that we continue to work on with our administrative team and certainly our staff as well. Uh, policy changes, I mentioned the HIP policy change uh, a few moments ago. That really has been huge uh, for us in giving us an avenue to address issues uh, without necessarily launching a, a formal HIP investigation, which truthfully is not always the best uh, mechanism to address an issue. Um, code of conduct, that's something that we update yearly. Uh, if you look at our code of conduct today versus where it was three to five years ago, uh, there are a lot more restorative practices in there in terms of the language, in terms of uh, how we might handle certain student situations that come up. That doesn't mean that when we have to implement discipline, um, we don't do it. Of course, there's, there are times where consequences have to be put in place, but we also want to make sure we're addressing the underlying issue. So I'm going to shift gears. Second half of the report is really a focus on school safety and security. Um, it is perhaps the most important thing. Uh, none, no, nothing else happens if we're not safe and secure. I think we're all aware of that. Um, the goal work that we do, the classroom learning that we have, the arts, the athletics, all that above, it's really incumbent upon us uh, to make sure that we're doing everything we can to provide a safe and secure school community. The district invests a lot of human capital, time, energy into school safety and security. Um, that goes without saying, but I always say too, it is a collective responsibility, right? So it is not just about what the school district does, that it's about each member of our community, our staff, our, our, our community members, our parents, our students, right? We always say, you see something, say something, right? No different than when you're going to an airport. Um, you don't want to leave a door open, right? You don't want to let somebody into the building that perhaps shouldn't be there, things of that nature. So, but with that being said, it really starts for us with a collaborative relationship with West Windsor and Plainsboro Police. They are outstanding partners. Uh, when we have certain situations, uh, they are uh, always available to us. You know, it doesn't matter what time of day it is. Uh, that's something that we work uh, very closely with both police departments on a regular basis. 
Um, class three police officers, I believe everybody's aware, we've, this is now, I believe, our seventh year, um, our sixth or seventh year having class three officers in our schools. Um, at the end of the day, they, they are an insurance policy. While we do promote uh, community policing, it's really important that you have that insurance, insurance policy in that God forbid scenario. Uh, security monitors and aides, we had a significant shift uh, recently with our formerly eyes on the door staff. Uh, we now are, are, are titled security monitors. That's helped kind of streamline some of our shifts and our coverage, particularly after hours when our facilities are used. Um, with that being said, I want to recognize Mr. Perry Ray in the back here. Um, he is our security coordinator for the district and he helps me immensely and he does a great job uh, keeping our schools safe. Security vestibules now with the referendum work that we did are in every building. We have visitor protocols. We have software that monitors when somebody comes in. They have to swipe their license. Um, if you're dropping your son or daughter's lunch off for school, sorry, you're not coming in the building. You put it in a box. You put it somewhere where we can get it and get it to your son or daughter. But really try to enforce that unless you have some specific reason to come to the school, um, you're not getting in, right? So that's really something that we, we make sure that we follow. Cameras everywhere, there are 700 plus uh, security cameras that can be accessed 24 seven. seven. Certainly they're a determent, but when you have situations that arise, typically there's some sort of security footage, right, that you can go back to so you can address it. Uh, fire, safety, security drills, every school does two drills a month. That is a requirement in the state, but we make sure that we're practicing different types of drills. So, of course, everybody knows a fire drill. You could have a um, lockdown drill, right, in that incident. Um, if you need to lock down our staff, our students are well aware of what that looks like. We train for that on a regular basis. Uh, part of that is communication out to the parents when we do those drills. Uh, medical emergency drills, we do lock, um, in addition to lockdown, we do lock out drills. So there are very types of drill, various types of drills that we do on a regular basis to make sure uh, that we are well prepared when uh, an incident does occur. Gaggle software to manage student safety on school provided technology. So Google Chrome, uh, Google Chat, uh, Gmail, things of that nature. This is not meant to be a gotcha thing. This is meant to uh, intervene when our students might be struggling or might be doing something inappropriate, but there's always a learning opportunity for, there, for that or to get them the help that they need uh, when that time arises. So we have our partnership with Rutgers University mental health clinicians. Um, that's very valuable in supporting our student mental health needs, school counselors, student assistance counselors, child study school nurses. So there are a lot of resources that go into keeping our schools safe. Um, a few pictures just want to share. These are some of our class three officers. I mentioned, no, they're not just there as an insurance policy. We, we promote uh, community policing. So they, they do their best to try to get to know the students, to be a fabric of, part of the fabric of a particular school. Uh, at the high school level, you also have security aides that serve in a little bit of a different capacity. I mentioned the security monitors you see there on the lower left-hand side. That's the security vestibule over at High School North. Um, so those are, we have various uh, staff members that serve and help keep our schools safe and keep a watchful eye out on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, this, I talk about the partnership with West Windsor and Plainsboro uh, Police, first responders. Uh, they use our facilities on a regular basis, obviously not necessarily when school is in session, to train, to prepare for the what-if situations, right? This is not a great image or uh, to necessarily look at, but this is something that I think is really critical for the community to know. Our police come into our buildings and they practice for those what-if scenarios. Um, and it's something that's a best practice, uh, regardless of what community you're in. Uh, and that includes our first responders, right? If you have hazmat, you have some other tactical response, they need to know what, where, when and where they're going when it comes to our facilities. They have access to things that uh, allow them to be able to respond to a situation in a timely manner. Um, that work continues. So about a year and a half ago, we started work with the Office of Emergency Management and thinking about reunification plans. And what that means is that if you have some sort of incident that requires you to relocate an entire school, for example, you may recall um, Superstorm Sandy, uh, Princeton Alliance Church. Uh, one of our schools was relocated uh, to use Princeton Alliance. But, and they are one of our partners along uh, with St. David here in West Windsor have officially become board approved uh, 
re reunification sites. This work started with a group of administrators, first responders in this room about a year and a half ago. Um, this past summer, we did walkthroughs at both facilities for our administration, for our buildings and grounds, for our transportation, just to be familiar with those spaces so that we're prepared if we had to relocate an entire school um, and, in, and if we had to do it during the school day. This is kind of what that looks like when you think about reunification. This is just a simple snapshot of what that, how would you plan accordingly? Where would your first responders be? Where would your parent pickup be? There is a whole process behind the scenes that would have to occur. There's a lot of work working with law enforcement, working with Office of Emergency Management to make sure that we have a plan. I hope it sits on the shelf for 30 years and collects dust and we never have to use it, but it's there if we need it. So that's really important work. Site assessments, these are also things that we do, especially over the summer, to just look at security vulnerabilities using the Department of Homeland Security as a checklist, if you will, working with buildings and grounds, the school administration, just to do walkthroughs, right? It could be shrubs that are too high. It could be uh, you know, fencing that allows access to the HVAC unit, things of that nature that we want to stay on top of that need, might need maintenance, that might need correction. Uh, that's a really valuable tool for us internally to discuss about what do we make sure, where, how do we make sure that we're uh, removing any security vulnerabilities? Finally, uh, I'll leave you with our mission statement for the district. Again, um, none of the great work that we're doing here in WWP happens uh, unless our schools are safe and secure. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. McDonald. Um, now, I want to ask the board if there are any questions or comments for Dr. McDonald. Um, okay, I Go ahead, Dina. I just want to say thank you for all you do with us. It's pretty comprehensive and appreciate you, um, the work that you and your team do, do for this to keep our kids and our um, staff safe. And um, uh, also that you adapt your program for whatever comes our way. So I appreciate that. So I want to say that. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I do have, um, I, I was curious about one thing that you mentioned about the nurtured heart approach and the training for not just staff, but also to parents. Um, what, um, for, I know sometimes we have parent universities and not everyone can attend in person, but we do have the recordings online. Um, would there be something similar available for parents who can't attend? So that's, we're hoping, we're just developing that now. The first step has just been to get uh, at least multiple staff members trained in the Nurtured Heart approach and then think about training our staff. In the past, um, we have done Nurtured Heart workshops for parents, right? Just um, coping mechanisms, how to respond to uh, challenging behaviors, things of that nature, is how to do positive reinforcement and not necessarily reinforce negative behaviors. So we anticipate at some point uh, putting that out there and then certainly get an opportunity for people that can't attend, whether it's recording something, whether it's doing something in person, but that's all in the works. Perfect. Thank you so much for the presentation. You're welcome. Oh, uh, actually, uh, Shweta? On the same note um, that Graylin just asked about Nurtured Heart Report, is there any type of parent training for youth mental health first aid or just noticing signs and symptoms for parents? So not specifically for youth mental first aid. We've done that specifically for our staff, but we do plan on having parent universities. So we've done parent universities every year where we might have topics such as adolescent anxiety. We might have topics such as uh, you know other mental health related challenges that parents are facing. Um, we actually just had a meeting this week to talk about what those dates are and potential topics. We leverage our UBHC clinicians too to talk about some of the things that um, parents should be aware of and signs, symptoms, so to speak. Um, so we do anticipate doing that for the coming school year as well. Liz? Thank you for the presentation as well. Um, I was just curious about the comparison in the incidence charts between 2022 and 2023. I'm surprised by how much violence has increased, the like incidence of violence have increased at the K through five grade level and if you can give examples of what that looks like, but also a surprise by the decrease with substance abuse, you know, um, from the two years. Sure. Any yeah, I, it, it is interesting. I look, when I look back at the data going back a few years and then you kind of have to take what you, what happened during the pandemic with a grain of salt a little bit and look prior pandemic, the numbers have kind of fluctuated year to year. So there's no necessary rhyme or reason, but 
when you think about coming off the pande pandemic and the dysregulation for students that perhaps weren't in a classroom, didn't have those regular structures, um, there definitely has been an increase. Um, thankfully, we're not seeing it as much this year as we did in years past uh, coming off the pandemic in terms of those social interactions. Um, and again, violence relative, it, it falls into a category. If there's a fight that happens between two second graders, it still has to go in, right? Um, so that's, you know, what that looks like versus a, a fight between uh, a high school or, or two different things. But more than anything, I think what you're seeing there is that those uh, minimize social interactions across the board, especially for students that were in front of cameras and not necessarily in front of adults, didn't have that same structure, um, led to more dysregulation. So I think that's what you're still seeing with some of these numbers, but they will fluctuate, fluctuate year to year. All right, great questions. Um, anybody else? All right, thank you, Dr. McDonald. All right, you're welcome. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now we turn to our special opportunity for public comment on the 2023-2024, which is a verbal correction I'm making now to your uh, printed agendas or your p digital PDFs. Um, 23-24 Annual District Report of Violence, Vandalism, and Harassment, Intimidation, and Bullying, which is the Student Safety Report. The board now invites thoughts and reactions on the annual district report of violence, vandalism, and harassment, intimidation, and bullying from members of our community who are present. Each participant is asked to give his or her name and address prior to making a statement, which will be limited to three minutes in accordance with board policy 0167. All statements shall be directed to the presiding officer. This public comment period shall be limited to 15 minutes. Um, do you have anything specific uh, about the report? It, it is not. So just to note for everyone, uh, there, we still will have uh, two public comment periods for general comments. So anything about um, the report? No? Okay. Then I'll close this um, special opportunity for public comment and move to the um, approval of the report. Um, so I'd like to get a motion to accept the 2023-2024 Annual District Report of Violence, Vandalism, and Harassment, Intimidation, and Bullying, known also as the Student Safety Report, as required by the New Jersey State Department of Education, um, with the uh, Title 18A, 17-46, and uh, NJAC uh, 6A, 16-5.3F. Um, <laughs> it's a mouthful. Um, Pooja and Dina. Uh, all right. Chris. Okay, we'll start. We'll start with Ms. Krug. Yes. I actually said that back backwards. Sorry. Start. Uh, we'll, and next is Ms. Bonsell. Yes. <laughs> and next we'll go to Ms. Chenier. Yes. Um, uh, and, and next we'll have Ms. Shetty. Yes. Ms. Zovich. Yes. Ms. McEwen. Yes. Motion passes. Perfect. And that will uh, now adjourn the special public hearing on the 2023-2024 Annual District Report of Violence, Vandalism, and Harassment, Intimidation, and Bullying, or the Student Safety Report. Um, I'm actually going to uh, turn it over to Mr. Mark Toscano. Just real quick, Madam President, just in addition to the items that were noted on the agenda that was pre-printed prior to the meeting, uh, the board also discussed an exception number seven the matter under docket number P as in Peter, 2021-00390. Everything else is accurate. All right, thank you. Um, <coughs> Dr. Adderhold, do you have any I, I comments? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, I just want to take a moment uh, to recognize one of our colleagues that's in the audience. Um, September 1st, 1987, district hired Miss Andrea Bean um, as, yes, you, you Bean, um, as Andrea sits with a month ago prior to retirement, I'm pleased to announce um, just publicly that she is the proud recipient of the AMTNJ Max Sobel Award. Um, Max Sobel was a 50-year mathematics educator in New Jersey who went on to become the president of the National Council of Teacher of Mathematics between 1980 and 82. Um, Andrea is the past president of AMTNJ, and this past uh, three weeks ago, um, the nominating committee came together where they recognized one educator in the state of New Jersey. 
and the email I received to inform me of this states, we're happy to brag about the profound impact that Andrea has had on the countless students, teachers, and colleagues throughout her career. Your work embodies the highest ideals of our profession, a commitment to excellence, a passion for equity and access, and an unwavering belief in the power of mathematics to transform lives. You've opened doors, challenged conventions, and inspired a love of mathematics in generations of students. As you retire, as, as you move into retirement, know that the seeds you have planted will continue to grow and flourish. We especially appreciate all the work you've done for AMTMJ over the years. Andrea, congratulations and well-deserved recognition. Thank you so much, congratulations. Um, and now I'd actually like to uh, turn it over for our student representative reports um, from High School North. I'd like to uh, welcome and Please correct me if I mispronounce your name, uh, Anissa Samal. All right, perfect. And welcome back, Johnson Lin. And then also from High School South, uh, welcome Anna Chen. And uh, welcome back, Rachel Joseph. And I'll turn it over to you guys. All right. Um, hello. Thank you for having us. We are very excited to be back here and grateful for a successful start to our school year. Uh, we were glad to see our new student orientation held back in August was a large success with the help of our staff and our peer leaders. And as a senior, I can confidently say that I saw a lot less lost freshmen, which is always a great sign. <laughs> Within our first week, we had all of our class assemblies where our administration and our class advisors got a chance to go over a lot of new policies and exciting things for the upcoming school year. And speaking of these exciting events, uh, we've had a few fun programs, including our senior sunrise. And although the forecast was a little cloudy, cloudy, we saw a great attendance and a lot of embracement of school spirit from our seniors. Uh, back to school night was held last week, and it was also very success successful. Uh, we had over 50 student volunteers help guide the parents and facilitate the night. And looking to the future, on October 26th, South is holding their Hall of Honor event where esteemed alumni and staff are invited to come and socialize, seeing our school in its new and improved condition. And we are very excited to get to celebrate and welcome all of those guests. Thank you, Rachel. Um, so our, call, um, our seniors have happily started their college applications. And so a lot of our, um, a lot of college speakers and uh, have visited during lunch. Um, next week, um, we are looking forward to college fair and seeing some of our student volunteers. Uh, several of our advisor-run clubs have started and our fall drama, Harvey, is in the works. Um, this Thursday, the PSAT is happening for our sophomores and juniors and um, our, our freshmen and seniors will come later on and we will have club fair and our other clubs will officially start. Um, in the afternoon, we'll have um, a time for special guest speakers to come and, and students to listen to. And then for juniors and seniors, they can begin their college application or they can speak to your counselors about the college application process. Um, and finally, Student Council is hosting their first outdoor night on uh, movie night on October 18th, and they're featuring, featuring Goosebumps. So please bring your friends and family. Uh, we also had homecoming a couple weeks ago, and the theme was fairy tales. Our classes worked very hard on their decorations, and they turned out great. Um, on Monday, we had, um, for Spirit Week, on Monday we had traditionally Pajama Day. Um, Tuesday we had Sports Jerseys Day. Um, Wednesday we had Anything But a Backpack. Thursday, Hawaiian Day, and Friday, class colors for our pep rally. Um, then we had our Hoko game, and we also crowned our Pirate Crew um, 12, our final Pirate Crew 12. And um, then we had our dance on Saturday, and the seniors um, ultimately won Hoko. To end us off, I would like to highlight our sports. Uh, we've seen great participation and very successful season so far from all across the board. 
Uh, so starting on September 19th was our Red Card Cancer soccer game where North and South girls and boys team face each other. Very proud that our girls soccer team was able to take the win and they've moved on to an impressive 6-1-2 and two record. Definitely the best we've seen in a while. But overall, very grateful. The fundraiser for the American Cancer Society was able to raise $1,662.74 and we saw I went and there was a lot of uh, participation and support from friends, family, staff, et cetera. Our Girls South tennis team just won their match today to move on to the semifinals of the Central Jersey Group 4 tournament. So we're very proud of them. Our field hockey Girls South team is celebrating their seniors tomorrow for their senior night. Uh, so we wanted to just have a shout out for all of those seniors that have been dedicated to that program. And last but not least, Seth is very happy that our boys cross country senior runner, Shravan Pradeep, won Boys NJ Athlete of the Week on milesplit.com. So that was something we were very excited to be able to see. Um, with winter sports registration being open, we hope to see similar participation and great success. All right, thank you so much. We will pass it off to North for their report. All right, thank you, South. Um, good, ev good evening, everyone. We started our school year strong, and we decided to work with the peer leaders, and we chalked a positive messages in front of our school, on our walls, on our grounds, so that the first thing that students and teachers saw when they walked in were our positive messages to kind of start off the year strong. We also had our senior sunrise where we had our very own students, Connor and Sam DJ. So that was really cool to see. And in the first week of school, we had class assemblies where we introduced class expectations, fun events coming forward. And we also got the chance to introduce our new administration, the vice principal, Mr. Del Priore. So our students got a, the ability to kind of meet him in person and kind of interact with him and get to know him better. Moving on, during our second week of school, we ran our successful annual club fair. And this year, we approved a lot of new clubs at High School North. So we were really excited to see all of them show up for club fair and kind of have a chance to introduce themselves to the students so that they could get more involved. Additionally, our fall sports are up and running. And many of our, our sports teams are in the height of their seasons. In fact, our boys soccer team has their, spirit, their senior night right now. So we, I will be going to that game afterwards. And we had our spirit week for homecoming last week. So we had Monday for PJ Day, Tuesday, Jersey versus Jersey Shore Day, Wednesday, Decades Days, finally, Friday, we had class color days. And we had our homecoming game that Saturday, which is a little strange, but we made it work. Um, this year, we won our homecoming game, thankfully, 28 to 6, so it was a good victory. And we had a pretty successful homecoming dance. Um, we had to move the date, but due to kind of holidays, religious holidays, and the SAT being on the same day, we were able to work with Dr. Adderhall, get a new date for our homecoming dance, and we saw a record amount of attendance, so we're really pleased with that. And kind of despite having to adjust for the dance day, we were able to get over 400 participants. And then I'm gonna pass on the mic to my colleague. Thank you. Um, so continuing off that, we had back to school night last Tuesday where parents got to experience high school for a couple of hours and they got to meet teachers and staff. Um, along with that, last week our marching band had their home competition on our field with uh, over eight different schools being there and it was a huge hit. Additionally, seniors are starting college applications with October 15th and November 1st deadlines coming up quickly, and they've been meeting with counselors. And to continue on with college, North has had multiple colleges come visit during lunch and college fair is coming up as well. We have also started to collect payments for the senior Disney trip, which is coming up this year. And students and parents have had the opportunity to attend an informational meeting and to learn more about like what's gonna happen there. Our student council also attended the NJASC fall conference today. And we are looking forward to sending one of our, uh, one representative from HSN to run for state office this year. And then last but not least, PSAT testing is this Thursday, and we're wishing our sophomores and juniors good luck with their testing. Thank you. 
All right, thanks. Wow, I think this is why four years of high school goes by in a blink because it's only, what, the first week of October and I can't believe how many things you guys have done. And um, as I think on behalf of all the parents who are at Back to School Night, lost, uh, very much appreciate all the volunteers who helped because um, it was interesting. So appreciate your report and giving, uh, keeping us up to date with all the goings on at, at both high schools. And uh, so, but feel free to enjoy the rest of your evening. So thank you. And now I'd like to move on to the first opportunity for public comments. The board invites thoughts and reactions on agenda items and items of concern from members of our community who are present. Each participant is asked to give his or her name and address prior to making a statement, which will be limited to three minutes in accordance with board policy 0167. All statements shall be directed to the presiding officer. This public comment period shall be limited to 60 minutes. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, Gaurav Honda, Plainsboro. Uh, I come here today to talk about strong women. I also come here today to talk about bullies and the importance and strength of character. Uh, this is my ode to strong women. Uh, I'm, after all, married to one and raising one with the help of a school district. And I only see strong women here in front of me as well. Uh, Rachel, I wish she was here, has been at the helm of this board for over a decade now. And I wanted to congratulate her on an excellent tenure and setting the tone and cadence of these meetings and her many, many other contributions to this district. We all uh, marvel at Louisa's dedication to the district's children long after her kids have graduated. Uh, I still remember the time I used to drop my daughter at her house for Lego League years ago. I felt like a child myself in her home with all the toys and exhibits and Legos and uh, you know that any kid would like to play with. Uh, it's always tough, it was always tough to get my daughter to leave her home. Uh, Robin's dedication to duty and perseverance always deserves a mention. I was always impressed with her attention to details and her many volunteering tours of duty in the district. Uh, I still remember her door knocker and I'm sure <laughs> she ran out of things to write on it about her contributions to community <coughs> service. Uh, I remember rubbing shoulders with Dana uh, as we staffed the convenience stall at the volleyball games trying our best to fund the booster clubs, hoping that we raise enough for getting jerseys and equipment for our girls team. But this is not to take anything away from the men, and I always take comfort in the fact that we have a very strong personality, Dr. Yadahold, as the <laughs> head of our school district. Uh, after all, residents in the district are always demanding the best from the people who serve them. Uh, but we need more men as well, and you know, strong personalities, whether men or women, and more of them in our schools support structure and democratic institutions to share the burden with all the strong men, women that we are all so proud of. One of them, <coughs> a close friend, passed away last year in a tragedy that befell his entire family. We had a one-year remembrance service over the weekend for friends to pay respects, a, pic a picnic table installed in the memory of our friends and their children, in the park, and also release some balloons to mark the occasion. Uh, we were happy to have the mayor, the police chief, and a lot of friends in attendance. I was hoping that the Wyckoff PTA members and some members, I guess some of them are not here, uh, who had grieved for them would have joined us on the occasion as well, since he had worked very closely with them as part of the PTA. Uh, I did convey your regards to the family who was present on the occasion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody else for public comment for this first? <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Ajanta Shah, 1 Parker Road, Plainsboro, New Jersey. Good evening, everyone. I wanted to say hello, introduce myself. I am a proud graduate of the district, uh, kindergarten through 12th grade, and I am a graduate of high school north. Um, I'm a parent of two young children in the district, and I'm also a candidate for school board, running for school board this year. 
The district has had a really positive impact on me and has had a positive impact on me as a child and as an adolescent. And I ultimately chose education for my career pathway, starting as a teacher and then transitioning into ed policy and into data science and data analytics, which is what I do now. I wanted to, you know, I'm very glad that I was able to see the presentation this afternoon because I wanted to showcase um, and highlight a shift that I've seen, a positive shift that I've seen as a parent and as a former student, which is the prioritization of our students' mental health and social and emotional well-being. I really appreciate um, how much the board, our teachers, our staff have really prioritized that just as much as academic excellence. I think as a parent of two young children, um, it has been extremely helpful for me to kind of utilize and be familiar and have access to resources that my school's children's counselors and teachers have provided to me to sort of navigate really tough conversations and difficult situations. I know there's still more work to be done. Some of that was sort of alluded to today, and I hope that if given the opportunity, I'm able to kind of continue to champion that work um, and prioritize other important areas that our children need for their success. Thank you. Thank you. And I see B, there was another public comment. Hello. Hello. Usually I sound better, just that I've been screaming a lot for a kids' tournament over the weekend, so I sound a little <laughs> like this. But good evening. I'm uh, Rishi Tyagi, a proud Plainsboro resident and uh, wonderful. Uh, actually, I wanted to say a wonderful father, but I, I'd rather say father to two wonderful children in the WWP district. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity for having me here today. Uh, I'm here today to endorse Hanif Payak, my friend of 24 years, to the Board of Education. I know being in this position requires uh, a deep sense of gratitude and service towards the community and very strong leadership skills as exhibited by each one of you here. So I want to share some stories uh, from his life, which I think would be relevant to his candidature here. The first one is about perseverance. Having known him for 24 years, I have seen the ups and downs of his life. He grew up in a family with very modest means, worked his way to college. When we were in college, and this was the first year, there was an unfortunate incident of bullying against a lady student. Hanif took it upon himself. He mobilized more than 900 students for over a month and got justice for the student in the end. He was all of 19 years of age at that time. Fast forward in 2008, when he came to the US, his financial situation was extremely tough. But he was determined to make a difference. He started, over the next nine years, beginning 2008, he started several businesses, but unfortunately, none of them worked out. He didn't lose hope, he just kept working, and today I'm proud to say that he's the head of a multi-million dollar technology firm. All of this while devoting an extraordinary amount of time to community service, to social events, to serving people the best he can, especially during the COVID-19 initiative. On a lighter note, when you see how much time he spends on activities other than his work, you would wonder if he's really employed. <laughs> but I've seen his tax returns, so I know he is. He's always accessible and always there to help. I think that's a great quality in him. The second story I want to share about him today is about hands-on, roll-up-your-sleeves leadership. In 2021, when Hurricane Ida hit New Jersey, we had a big storm drain in our community that got blocked and threatened to flood a lot of houses. My house was the closest to it, unfortunately. And I called everybody from the township to any board of officials I could think of, but the situation was so bad all around that no one could help. Hanif actually picked up the phone, he called me, and he said, why don't we try doing it ourselves? I said, that's foolish. He said, let's try. What other option do we have? We actually got out there 40 minutes in bone-drenching rain. Both of us with rakes tried to clear that storm drain. We were able to do part of it, and at least water started flowing out. I'm thankful for his initiative and for even for motivating us to do more. Thank you. But I'm not telling you these, sorry, oh, I know my time's up. Yeah. If I could take we do time. have a second uh, opportunity for public comment if you want to hang out. 
Wonderful. Yes, but thank you. I think um, that proves thanks, he has an ability uh, to make I'm sorry, positive change. Sorry, we have change. to be fair to everybody for the three-minute so limit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, does anybody else have a public comment? Hi, everyone. Um, good evening, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. My name is Shailesh, and um, from Plainsboro. Uh, proud residents of this community um, and a great friend of Hanif. Uh, I have two kids in this uh, school district. One is attending elementary right now in town center and the second one is just about learning how to walk. Um, so I'm looking forward uh, to a great future for both of them um, in the school district. Um, today I'm here to endorse Hanif, Hanif Payak for the West Windsor Plainsboro Board of Education. Um, we live in the same community, as I mentioned, um, and we've worked on multiple initiatives uh, to serve the community um, in many selfless ways. I've witnessed uh, him being part of multiple initiatives around like fixing potholes in the community, uh, arranging for multiple uh, sports facilities, um, and even uh, participating in multiple events across the community to foster the spirit um, that I feel is gonna bode well um, as part of his candidacy. Um, I came to the school district primarily because um, of the great reputation it has and um, the academic excellence it promises, but at the same time, um, it's, it's usually a conversation we have while we are trying to drop off our kids off at the bus stop. It's like, it's not just academic excellence that we pride in. Um, what is the best way for all of us to ensure they have a well-rounded ability, right? Uh, and me being part of a leading tech ex executive um, at Adobe, um, where we pioneer in AI, we recognize our kids will will grow up in an age uh, that we've probably never witnessed, right? Like, um, what's the role of AI that our kids are gonna have as they enter middle school and high school? Uh, what's the role of devices, uh, smart devices that they would be having access to, and, and what sort of ramifications or advantages is it gonna, is it gonna have? Um, this is where I feel Hanif is um, with his background um, as a leading tech entrepreneur. Uh, can help us out because um, he's worked in multiple different initiatives to ensure like the responsible use of technology. He's advocated for it. Um, I've witnessed it, as I mentioned, within the community, and I'm hoping he continues to do so. Um, I also share the same passion as Hanif uh, for sports. Um, I've played multiple sports around the year. Um, I play field hockey, uh, play soccer. Um, he's arranged for a lot of these facilities to be made available within our community, whether it is solar lights to ensure kids can continue playing uh, soccer towards the later evening, making sure there is a cricket pitch available. So I hope um, all of this serves as good examples for all of you esteemed personnel to consider his candidacy um, and urge all of you to vote for Hanif Payak and support a brighter future uh, for our children in our township. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else for uh, public comment at this first opportunity? Okay, seeing none, uh, I'll move to close this uh, first public comment period and move on. Um, now we don't have um, any committee reports. We haven't met since the last Board of Education meeting, so we can go on to the voting portion of the meeting. So for administration items numbers one through five, can I get a motion to approve those? Um, Dana and Liz? Uh, any questions or comments before? <coughs> yes. 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 Um, that we don't have any curriculum and instruction items, so um, can I get a motion to approve finance items numbers one through 17, but I do have um, verbal corrections on um, finance item uh, under transportation number four uh, for the um, cancellation renewal, just correcting the final route cost to um, 1,937 and 43 cents. Also for finance item, and that was for four, in case I missed saying that, and finance item number 17A, um, instead of one district coach, it's, I'm correcting it to say two district coaches. And we also have a blue addendum 
Uh, so, um, Shweta and Robin, any questions or comments? Yes. 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 Okay, and can I get a motion for personnel items numbers one and two plus the green and the pink addenda? Um, Pooja and Dina. Yes. 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 Um, and actually, before we move on, I do want to recognize uh, three retirements um, that we just voted to approve. Um, first is Kathleen Costello. Um, uh, she's retiring after 25 years serving our district. Um, she's a special education teacher from High School North. We also have uh, Melissa Coppola. Uh, hopefully I'm saying that correctly, Melissa. Um, 29 years of service to WWP. Um, she is uh, the art teacher at Community Middle School. And we also have Tracy Lee, who is retiring after 17 years in the district. Um, she was She's an instructional assistant at Maurice Hawk. So I just wanna thank, um, thank the three of you for your years of uh, dedication and service to uh, the school district and congratulate you on your retirement and wish you the best of luck. Um, Enjoy. And um, so now that means we can move on to we go, um, to um, can I get a motion to approve the Board of Education minutes from August and September? Uh, Liz and Shweta. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Um, do we have any abstentions? Yes. Uh, for a September 17th meeting and a closed executive session, please. Perfect. Thank you. For the August 27th minutes. All right. Perfect. All right. Um, and um, do we have any board liaison reports? Thanks, Dana. Um, I am the board liaison to the New Jersey School Board Association. There have been a few um, things that have come up over the last um, few weeks since our last board meeting. So. Um, I am the Mercer County Delegate to the New Jersey School Board Association Board of Directors, and I attended their first meeting um, of the academic year on September 20th. Um, the executive director shared the reorganization plans he has implemented based on his three pillars of content connection and advocacy, and we will see these themes run through the um, annual workshop, which is in less than two weeks. And we are all looking forward to the professional development and networking opportunities at workshop. I'm also serving as the Vice President of the Mercer County School Board Association, and I um, recently led the creation and update process for the bylaws for the Mercer County School Board Association, and these bylaws will be presented to all Mercer County School Board members 30 days before the next uh, county meeting, which is on November 21st, and we will um, vote on that then. And. Um, we will be having, uh, no November 21st, we'll be at the, that meeting for Mercer County School Board Association. We'll be at um, Trenton School Board Office, and that we will feature um, George Scott, who has come before, to speak in our district and also to Mercer County School Board Association. He'll be talking about um, social-emotional learning and providing support during channel challenging times. In the winter, we'll have um, a virtual meeting on artificial intelligence. And um, we, the district, West Windsor Plainsboro, is going to be hosting the second year of the Mercer County Unsung Hero Ceremony on March 20th at um, High School South. And then our final meeting um, will be in May. So I just wanted to give you girls that update. Thanks. Thanks, Dana. Um, yeah, lots of, lots of things to put on the calendar, so thank you. Um, do we have any other liaison reports? No? Okay. Um, any new business? Okay. That takes us to the second opportunity for public comments. The board invites comments from members of our community who are present. 
Each participant is asked to give his or her name and address prior to make a sta making a statement, which will be limited to three minutes in accordance with Board Policy 0167. All statements shall be directed to the presiding officer. This public comment period shall be limited to 15 minutes. Any, any comments tonight for our second opportunity? Just want to make sure. All right, looks like we've got someone. So, Gaurav Honda, Painsboro. Since Rachel is not here, I'm going to say she was uh, more generous with giving time. So, <laughs> I hope Grayling, you would uh, continue the legacy. <laughs> Uh, the second topic I wanted to talk about is one of bullying, and October, after all, is Bullying Prevention Month, and uh, bullying is not just a school issue, but continues into adulthood as well in most cases. Over the past year, I have grieved over my friend who I spoke about, but also learned a lot, speaking to friends and families, going over the conversations we used to have, I introspected a lot. I joined the Citizens Police Academy and now volunteer as a CERT member as well, but then I realized the problem was of a different nature. For the mind is a prison of its own, and the bully remains in it rent-free, and there are really no, role, no laws to rule against this yet. We should remember, though, that people who are bullied tend to document their experiences and share their feelings with people close to them. So while it might well be outside the jurisdiction of the law, society is still very mindful of these things. Therefore, I request all of us to introspect as well. Sometimes, the bully is not aware of the consequences of his or her actions and may end up setting into motion a chain of events that eventually spiral out of their control. Just thought it would be nice to share that experience. Uh, how do we get, how do you as a community get around this? I think this brings us to the question of character, which we talk about in our mission statement as well, strength of character. A question my high schooler often asks me, what is character? For me, the answer is almost always the same. Character is what you do when you think or know that nobody is watching you. It's how you treat the most vulnerable among society. What we are seeing in the current election environment in the school district is not character. We have a strong legacy of positive campaigns in this district. Community residents have been calling our WWP coalition of parents and highlighting some of the disturbing and concerning things that they are witnessing. Lawn signs are being stamped upon. Candidates are being intimidated by calls from proxies under false pretenses to remove their signs, which are then replaced. Residents are getting calls from someone claiming to be from the PTA office, asking them to pledge their allegiance to the board candidates by putting up lawn signs on their home properties. The PTA is sacred ground and should not be weaponized in election campaigns. I know the PTA is outside the jurisdiction of the school district, but it's more of a moral and ethical issue. We need to show the highest levels of prudence as this at times is, a legal question, is not a legal question, but one of moral and ethical issues. I don't want to cast aspirations, I don't need to cast aspirations or inspirations on anyone, as some of this, as you can see, is being played out in public, in social groups. Which brings me to the exhibit I have shared with the board. It's one thing to blur out your opponent's name on the ballot to not give them visibility, but to completely deny their existence on an official ballot or depiction of one is election misrepresentation and ballot fraud at best. As a society, we should rise above this behavior and hold ourselves to the highest standards. Thank you. Stick with the rules will come with and three go, minutes. But we are Thank you so here. much. But I, I invite you to come character. to the next board yes. meeting, though. I'm just Thank wrapping you. up. This is the 21st century, and someone is always watching. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, are there any other public comments for this second period? We only have 15 minutes, so okay. Seeing none, um, I will move us to uh, to adjourn. Uh, can I get a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting? Uh, Dana and Liz. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Thank you so much for participating and attending. Good night. <laughs>